Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about brushless, magnetless, synchronous motor or the same uh, magnetless motor. So let's dive right into it. Yes, I have made this video uh, previously, but now I have learned a lot more about this. So I'm doing a deeper dive into it. So I do apologize if you feel some of the, you know, data points have been already covered. Now, what is the problem that we are looking into magnetless one? Because recently, neodymium is a kind of normal thing. It's like it used to be always produced like very early on, but there was not enough demand. But randomly, like there is a lot of demand of it. Consequence, price went up. Now, recent event, specifically after pandemic, we have learned uh, a brutal fact that we, our world is way too fragile, meaning dependency on rare earth metal could be catastrophic for example recently silicon industry is going through silicon crisis and it is brutal and you have to understand this fact only three manufacturers exist let that sink in like the whole planet hundreds of country as in like almost 200 countries they are relying on three factories and all these three factories cannot ramp up their production and so whole planet economy is suffering so this is very brutal so if you are a corporation let's say mahindra tata or whatever have you and if you are want to launch a car you do not want this sort of vulnerability where it's like i do not care how much magical performance this gives me if it has consequences you will be like hmm how many countries are there that can provide me high quality neuronium at cheap enough price and you will be like oh you have to understand this is very significant it's not an issue for a company small scale as like tesla and yes tesla is small scale because if you compare how many cars they have sold not to be sold sold so far there are flop models from major car manufacturers that have sold that much so let that sink in like there is a multiple zeros difference so a company like tata they make cars like there is no tomorrow a company like suzuki mahindra they make millions of it so at that point in time having a vulnerability is a very um, unacceptable quote unquote and then you may be like okay let's just go yolo let's go with the king of the motors which is induction motor and just don't worry about it well it does work it has everything we need and many low budget ev cars already utilize that so it's awesome but it does come with a consequence that it has low efficiency now be mindful uh, low uh, like on paper it should be as efficient as 90 percent in real life 85 percent is easily achievable if it's some uh, love and care with some good driving technology you can achieve driving technology as in like the vft that is driving this puppy you can achieve 90 plus percent but you may be like what would be the difference between if i 90 percent versus 95 percent it sounds very little but here's the, it translates to a lot a lot as in like to give you a context of it, if, I, if i don't even exaggerate it that's literally translating from a 350 kilometer range to 400 kilometer because you always apply brake you always apply accelerate and at those those point of time uh, efficiency matters the most not that efficient so literally you can have the same amount of uh, basically cell capacity and go further if your motor is efficient even by one or two percent having much more uh, you know uh, efficiency is desirable then permanent magnets are temperature limited, meaning if you are, uh, you know, using a motor in a very power dense environment, meaning the stator coils are really, really powerful, your rotor will heat up. And that was an issue when Tesla company was trying to make very high power induction motor and they were very small. But here's the deal. The moment they ramp it up, it was awesome, like super amazing power. And then the power started to drip. They are turning the same amount of electrical energy. It's just that it's turning to heat because the rotor started to heat up. I squared R losses started to creep up. So they had to drill through the rotor and had liquid cooling the rotor so you can understand that point like induction motor is not a, a very desirable situation and permanent magnets also have that uh, same kind of issue if they heat up beyond a certain point they will start to demagnetize now thankfully uh, modern uh, chemistry is powerful enough to, that they can give you a very powerful magnet that uh, is like you know high temperature resistant which are generally used in wind turbines and things of that nature but generally they are lower grade and uh, you know more expensive meaning they can survive 200 degrees celsius but they are n42 rather than n52 that's an issue. So permanent magnets are temperature. And think of this, let's say your car burnt down. Yeah, your car is scrapped now. Like you can uh, you can have an inverter that is like completely sealed, everything is okay. Only the cells caught on fire, you replaced it, everything. Yeah, the motor is no longer working because the magnet is demagnetized. So that is a very serious issue. And traction motors have varying loads. You have to be mindful about that. Right tool for the right job. We utilize induction motor in almost everything. And most of the places this puppy is suited like a you know awesome GG. But here's the we also make a universal motor. We also make a reluctance motor. Right tool for the right job. But in case of EV market, you have to design something that has much wider variability, meaning at low RPMs, ludicrously high torque, it's like I got this. At very high RPM, low torque, it's like I got this. Which you may be surprised that permanent magnet motors are generally preferred over almost everything simply because they have really good starting torque. So you press the accelerator, your car is like, I got this fam. You feel it. Like you're like, I got this. 
But the moment you start to go in highway cruising speed, it's like starts to fight back with your own system, which is classified as back EMF. Fundamentally, not a really desirable situation. And how can you have a scenario where you can achieve what you want to achieve? You have to have variable magnetic field in the rotor. Basically, things that is rotating, it does not need the exact same magnetic strength. But if you put a permanent magnet, it's locked. Let's say it has one Tesla. Uh, one Tesla is too high, but let's just go YOLO on it. One Tesla is here. Here's the, what if you need a 0.7 Tesla? But what if you need 1.2 Tesla? You can't change it. It's just like once done, go home. And then you may be like, okay, if electromagnet is the solution where we can control everything in the rotor, why not use brush? It does you uh, work, but problem is they are idiotically inefficient. And if you watch like very early, as in early 2000 e electric car versions, a lot of people were using DC uh, shunt motors for that. But there are sparks, like there was sparks coming out of those motors because like it has GG amounts of torque. I mean, like this was the precursors to modern induction motor in a railway. So let that sink in. These motors are ludicrously powerful, but again, brushes are not desirable. They are fire hazard on themselves. So. They wear and tear and they create losses and they are really, really electrically noisy. So non-desirable. And you may be like switch resistance seems to solve all of the issues. They do not have very good starting torque. And not to mention they are not uh, inherently self-starting. You, It's basically like an electromagnet, you are rotating it. You are rotating it, it's not self-rotating. So how this magnetless uh, motor works? Well, I do feel very silly that in last video, I did not specify that if you have ever looked into a brushless AC generator, which are generally used in power plants or medium sized generator sets, basically a generator that is around uh, 3 kVA uh, to around 5 to 15 kVA, generally they are brushless. So that exact same thing. Now you were like, that's a generator, but here's the, I already made a video about a motor generator unit. The reality is all motors are capable of acting as generator. All generators are capable of acting as motor. There is no two different things. Of course, wiring, cooling, these sort of things can be, you know, fine tuned for the exact need. But on a fundamental, on a principle level, nothing is different. This is a very good example. Think of this like, uh, why do we have brushless exciters? Uh, well, you have electromagnetic coils that dump energy into receiver coils. Receiver coil gets AC because it's physically moving. That AC goes into a diode uh, stage that is spinning. And that diode stage creates DC that goes into rotor and rotor acts like electromagnet. And then you spin it around stator, you get your energy. Now, let's say your load goes down and your voltage has to go up because again, it is having uh, the fixed amount of energy, you will reduce use that you're like the electromagnet that is pumping the power into it you're like hey chill bro chill chill we don't need uh, this is what we call, call us uh, active voltage regulation so you're like okay voltage starts to go up you're like calm down okay now somebody put a very huge load let's say a microwave load it's like okay now the load is going okay more power up same concept control c control feed into this nothing else it's just a Somebody figured out that we could have used this it's like that's it like somebody figured out how to use this now be very mindful the there is no magnet needed because uh, if you look at uh, tesla's uh, current motor utilization they are utilizing a bit of permanent magnet with uh, assisting reluctance motor now the reason why they are doing that is at low rpms uh, the magnet is better but at high rpm reluctance is better this puppy has no magnet and it can beat it in both scenarios and it is also synchronous so compared to induction motor this is much much better uh, and then rotor gets the power from the induction. It's as simple as that. If you look at the generator, it's the control switch, control feed into it. Now you may be like, okay, this may be not a very powerful, but this is very small, very powerful. Think of this, uh, the frequency is much different. Uh, the power is generally component of two factors. Like uh, in case, case of watt, generally you have to multiply voltage into amps. Same goes for here, torque into RPM uh, gives you the total power output. So the uh, basically RPM of these puppies are much higher. Your generator will be spinning at let's say 3600 RPM for 60 Hertz grids. This puppy could uh, spin at 12,000 RPM. So of course it can be much smaller for the same command of uh, ludicrously high amount of power rating. That's why some, sometimes it does feel weird. It's like, you know, hey, I'm looking at these motors like, you know, they are like, you know, uh, 50 horsepower and I'm looking at like this tiny motor in my EV that is like, you know, 100 horsepower. It's like, how the heck frequency? Uh, those systems that you are running in your household, they are generally designed for 50 hertz for most of the world, 60 hertz in case of USA, and in case of uh, cars, they are generally running at 300 or 400 hertz. So that's why it's so smaller. So magnetless allows you to achieve same thing, basically same performance as this brushless generator system. Now, how do you drive this sort of thing? Well, you have to understand, you have to have a separate inverter stage because you have two electromagnets that you are uh, inducing energy into. So you have to have a different, uh, basically, sub-supply, quote-unquote, and you directly create a inverter and then you send to, uh, basically, a coil. Now, coil will send the energy into receiving coil on the rotor side because there is air gap now. And then you will have, uh, basically, rectification, say, this puppy. 
now this puppy will convert the ac that is coming in and make it into dc that's the whole point you are literally controlling how much uh, basically magnetic strength is in the rotating part by controlling the energy that is fed into it now because the uh, manufacturers figured out like already a lot of people have started to manufacture inverters trying to tack this on was not uh, desirable for many people so you can buy this from many company as an add-on like this uh, puppy is a, a rotor current controller that can be added on utilizing CAN bus so if many almost scratch many almost 100% of EV systems have a proper CAN bus so if you create a control loop you can do that with CAN bus this can be added on now if you are a new company let's say you are starting a, your giant orders of like let's say 10,000 inverter you can have a you know rather than separate system you can have embedded system this company itself uh, gives you a option where they can build the inverter for you depending on your requirement but you do need a separate system and spinning diode is an extra thing that you have to add on to uh, basically your rotor this is the only extra thing uh, this and the receiver those are the only extra thing that are added and be very mindful synchronous motor while they are amazing while they are more efficient than uh, induction motor they are not self-starting like wait a minute why the heck anybody uses it if it's not self-starting? Well, somebody figured out that uh, synchronous motors uh, generally have fixed RPM. That's awesome for many industrial processes. It's like, hey, they're supposed to rotate at, let's say, 800 RPM. Each supposed to rotate at 800 RPM. Not more, not less. So synchronous motor is awesome for that. And not to mention the fact that it is a bit more efficient also translates a lot. Then how the heck you start it? Well, in, nowadays you can do that with VFD. Now, even VFDs that are capable of uh, driving uh, induction motors, they have a setting now because microcontrollers are so cheap that like just slow down the frequency to a point where it starts the system. It's like if you slow enough, you can start it. But the problem is like when you are talking about like a line electricity and you directly plug it, the frequency is exactly at like 50 hertz or 60 hertz. It's too uh, too fast. It has to start at like 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz. Then once it has the inertia, then you can go YOLO on it. Then you can go up to 400 hertz, but it will not start if you directly connect to the load. So in older system, people figured out, put a squirrel cage on a synchronous motor. That squirrel cage will provide the starting motion. Once it's started, then you will energize the basically rotor using DC current and then ta-da. So be mindful, it does require a bit of reprogramming to VFD. So if you want to utilize a, a DIY system for that, be mindful your VFD, look into your VFD spec sheet, can it start a synchronous motor? Only then this puppy will work. Normal induction uh, starter system will not work. It does need to slow down the frequency a lot. Almost same as a, a reluctance motor. Like literally how exactly you start a reluctance motor, same thing applies here. Now it may sound way too convoluted, it's like hey, it's better than induction motor, I got it, but switch reluctance can do almost every same thing and it's much cheaper, the rotor is much cheaper, but here's the deal. It is better than induction motor simply because it's synchronous compared to asynchronous, but it has power factor of 1. Let that sink in, this puppy can achieve power factor of 1, meaning from inverter's point of view, this is just running a resistor load, meaning your IGBTs are like, I get this fair. Like for example, if you have ever done any purchase, any transformers or any UPS, any inverter, solar inverters, things of that nature, you will always notice that they never have kilowatts. They always have VA. Why? Because any AC component, AC electricity, generally have to two components: the real power, apparent power, and you have to calculate for both of them. So, for example, let's say you buy a 1500 VA inverter for your motor system. Awesome. But here's the if the power factor of the motor is inherently not good, no matter how much clearance, you can uh, clear it up to a certain extent, but that itself not only add cost, complexity, extra unit, mass, and not to mention um, a hassle. Like you have to do some power factor correction is so difficult. Sometimes you need a microcontroller with a lot of other sub, uh, systems to just to manage that. It is inherently not suitable for things that have variable frequency. For example, if your frequency is like fixed, like 50 hertz, done, go home. Super easy to power correct. But you have a system, oh yeah, the frequency can be as low as like 10 hertz and go as high as 400. It's ludicrously difficult. This puppy does not care. Power hertz one. So what does that translate to? Like what would it mean for a company that is utilizing this sort of motors? That simply means if you buy a, a inverter unit, that is let's say 150 kilowatt rated, that means 150 kVA, you can actually get 150 kVA to your motor, meaning the rotational energy would be almost that much. That is amazing. Most of the induction system or reluctant system, they do not have power factor um, this amazing. So not only your inverter will last longer, your inverter will heat up less and you're losing less energy on the filtering stage. So that is the amazing aspect. The power factor is awesome. And then this also has much higher peak torque. I specified the people want to use magnets simply because it gives much better starting torque. Reluctance motor is not really good at uh, starting torque. This puppy because it has electromagnet. Once it starts to spin like just one RPM, it's like I got this. I got this. It's like I got this. 
So you can press the accelerator and this motor will be like, I got this. So that's why people want to invest into this. On top of that, you're like, okay, I got this. It basically gives you the benefit of permanent magnet and switch reluctance in the same time. So not only at, you can have peak torque, which will beat any magnetic system, it will also give you high efficiency when you are driving at highway speeds, at which time a permanent magnet starts to fight with itself. So that's the whole point. It takes care of the weakness of switch reluctance. It takes care of the weakness of permanent magnet and it beats uh, induction motor like so far off is like bro, it's not even funny. So that's the reality. That's why people are working on this puppy. Power factor of one, meaning everything heats up less. You do not have to spend boatload of money to make a truckload size of uh, basically power character correction unit. So that is amazing. That's why people are uh, pouring so much money into this. I never understood the significance of that part. Is that means like rather than like only, oh, I bought 100 kilowatt inverter unit, only like uh, with a lot of filtering, you may get 90 or 95. But with this, it's like, yeah, 100 means goes to 100. Almost 99 will get to your motor. So that's the amazing part of it. And everything will relax. I got this. So that's amazing. And because it's a sync system, meaning synchronized system, the RPM translation is direct. Meaning if you send 350 hertz, you get 350 hertz equivalent of rotation, whatever that uh, translates to. How many poles you have, depending on that, you can figure out the rotation and you will get exactly that much rotation. That's amazing. That's why uh, people are pouring the money to the better power factor, better capability to basically it can outperform a uh, permanent magnet motor in terms of torque. It can outperform or not outperform, almost meet the efficiency of synchronous motor. So it has a synchronous switch reluctance motor. Basically, there is no criteria where this motor will not outperform every other system. Maybe you can find a motor that's like a bit more efficient, but generally most of them will be like, hey, I also have to consume a lot of magnet. This does not have the supply chain lock. So it does not have to like, I'm only relying on China. It's like, hey, it does not matter. You can build it in Nepal. You can build it in Pakistan. You can build it in India. You can build it wherever you want to do because most places have copper. So what we can expect in the future? Well, the first video that I created about the first hype of this top technology came from MAHLE, uh, Magnet Free Motor. Uh, basically, this this diagram, if you see this diagram in this, uh, this company is a German company. Uh, that's why I'm not pronouncing the name. I will butcher it. And then the, I recently figured out there is a second company, BRUSA, and they call it really weird name, Separately Excited Synchronous Motor or SSM. And they are making the same technology, meaning uh, synchronous motor with inductively excited rotor so the there is a consequence of this motor it does beat almost everything but it does have manufacturing complexity now be mindful it does have manufacturing meaning you have to have a lot of coil but the, those coil does not need to be this thin like I, I did find it a bit odd like why you're using thin coils it's really much better uh, from a manufacturing point of view to use thicker uh, you know uh, conductors and you cannot use this conductor on the basically rotating side very efficiently simply because you are, if you are utilizing AC AC does not travel through fat conductors because of skin effect and especially if you have high frequency if you are like lesser 200 Hertz you can use a uh, basically hairpin system but on the rotor you can make very thick system bus bars basically and you can notice that in power plants they generally rather than having coils they have bars like metal bars you can use that so that will reduce your uh, manufacturing cost by a lot and time also it's like a, rather than manufacturing in two hours you can manufacture it in one and a half so it uh, that can uh, provide a lot of substantial boost quote unquote and because the rotor is running on dc it's super easy to do and be mindful this sort of, sort of thing is manufactured it's not something brand new it's just like oh rather than making for 50 hertz or 60 hertz you have to make it for 400 hertz nothing else has changed and not to mention stator is exactly same Control C, Control V, the stator. Stator is exactly, I think it's not changing between induction, it's not changing between switch reluctance, it's not changing in this puppy. It's like Control C, Control V. Don't don't even worry about it, it's just Control C, Control V. So that's the amazing part. It does have a complex rotor manufacturing, but it can be managed. And if you're talking about a big car corporation, basically like Ford uh, or, uh, you know, Tata, Mahindra, things of that nature, they can afford the manufacturing cost, like because it's a one-time investment. Like once you built into it, then you, you can sort it out. And then you do no longer have supply chain limitation. And not to mention this puppy can perform. That's another aspect of it. It can perform in every day. It won't be like, oh, you know, this car is amazing, but like, you know, it does not have that punch. It's like, I got that punch. It's like, they it, it won't be like, you know, some reviewer will be like, you know, this car is awesome. It's just not efficient. No, I'm very efficient. And not to mention, you can make the same motor and you can have two different inverters. You can easily, uh, you know, reduce my expenditure on the inverter because it's running on one power factor. So that's also another benefit, beneficial thing that you can utilize. It's like, hey, my inverter is much cheaper because it's no longer fighting a power factor of, let's say, 0.7 or point. Eight. Uh, or again, active filtering is still filtering. You still have to filter it out. Somebody is like, you know, oh, you can filter the hell out of it. It's like, it takes money. 
and microcontroller and boatload of capacitors and boatload of other stuff also so that's why this is amazing technology the more i look into the more i realize like why the heck when you have switch reluctance people are still looking into this and any company that figures out the manufacturing basically tooling is just a tooling thing once you figure out the tooling thing you can have a car that can beat almost any other as long as uh, you know only the motor is the changing part so it does have some solid potential and given the fact that now i have found two companies that are working on it and i am pretty sure you cannot beat in this because this is a just a motor uh, just generator you know ac synchronous generator uh, wirelessly excited ac synchronous generator got these names suck so let's see what we can have in the future so this was my presentation on basically magnetless brushless motor Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.